Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is another wonderful edition of the Ignatius L. Jackson CPA YouTube channel. And we want to thank you for listening and we hope that you like and subscribe and comment and share and all that good stuff with all your friends. Uh, we're trying to grow this bad boy. Uh, we love educating you and uh, hopefully inspiring you to do some great financial stuff that will help you to build hopefully some generational wealth. Um, that's one of my goals is to get people um, saving and doing cool stuff. So um, today we're talking about how to pay zero in taxes. Huh, it's quite the conundrum. Um, I don't know anyone who wants to pay taxes. Well, maybe some crazy people that think that the government actually uses our money wisely. Um, but generally speaking, uh, I think most people probably don't want to pay taxes. So this is going to be an interesting topic. Uh, we're going to go through it. Uh, we're going to talk through it a little bit and give some thoughts and perspectives. And, you know, we'll see where he goes. So stay tuned. We will be right back in a second. And we're back so thanks for tuning in again okay I, again the topic today is going to be how to pay zero in income taxes okay um, at zero payroll taxes too I guess is what some people probably want to do as well um, let me just tell you this straight up I'm just gonna be honest with you I'm not even gonna try to hide this okay because I think you know people have this crap that they say that oh yeah you could do this you could do that there's no way you're going to pay zero in taxes with a couple exceptions. Okay? Here's the exceptions. If you have a business and you've spent more money than you've brought in, meaning you have a loss for the year, and you have no other income, then you will pay zero in taxes. Okay? If you are a uh, low-income person, meaning you're making less than thirty thousand, forty thousand a year, okay, and you have multiple kids, three or four kids, you will also likely pay zero in taxes. Okay, whether you have a W two job or a, um, a, a self-employment income type job. You'll likely pay zero in taxes because of something called the earned income tax credit, something called the uh, child tax credit, which is partially refundable now. So between those two credits, you'll probably end up paying zero in taxes. Essentially, the government's giving you money. All right, taking money from other people who are paying taxes and giving it to lower income people. Okay, so if you're in that category, you'll likely pay no taxes. So that's number two. The third way, which is really the best way if you ask me okay is to invest in real estate okay um and to have that be your only source of income essentially or at least primarily your source of income uh is coming from real estate okay now what do i mean by this um let's dig into that a little bit because i think you understand the first two i think most people can can grasp the first two they get it, you know, hey, a lot of people talk about that, right? Um, you know, if you have a business that's a loss, you don't pay any taxes for that particular year, okay? Now, I will say, I'm, I'm just going to be perfectly honest here, that you cannot do that for a long period of time. If your business is continually losing money, that's not a business. And eventually, the IRS will call your bluff, and you're going to lose that opportunity to do that, okay? So, um, just be careful with that one. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to be honest with you on that. Now, if you have some years where you have income and some years where you have a loss in your business, okay, that's fine. But you're not paying zero taxes every year. You're going to end up paying some taxes on some, those years that you have income and those years that you don't have income, you won't pay any taxes. Um, you know, so yeah, you, you can potentially finagle a little bit there. All right, to where you're paying very little in taxes, very little, very little, okay? That's it. I think most people also understand the whole earned income tax credit stuff. You know, I, 
it's a sore subject for me because there are people that literally take advantage of that. Like literally they take advantage of that. They will work for a couple, you know, months during the year and the rest of the year they do absolutely nothing. And they just live off of the refundable income tax credit they receive, plus the uh, welfare assistance they receive from the state, plus the Medicaid the assistance they get for healthcare, plus the food stamps they get for uh, meals from the state, plus the housing assistance they probably get from Section 8. I mean, they literally live off of the government and only work a couple months during the year. Anyways. I'm sorry. I'm, 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 I got off onto a sidetrack. Sorry. Let's get back on topic. <laughs> so, real estate. All right. Let's talk about the third option. Real estate. This is the most powerful tool in your repository um, that you can utilize to save yourself money on taxes. Okay. Here's the thing. I've talked about this on, you know, I've done a bunch of different episodes recently um, in series on real estate. I've done interviews with people in real estate. I've, I've done a bunch of stuff in the real estate side of things, okay? But at the end of the day, if you are doing real estate rentals, either short-term or long-term, there's a good possibility that you could not pay taxes on the money that you're earning every single year. But it requires you do a few things, okay? For long-term rentals, you probably need to make sure you qualify as a real estate professional, okay? Especially if you have other income that you're trying to offset, okay? So let's say you have a W-2 job and with a little bit of income, maybe $25,000, $50,000 a year or something like that. You could potentially offset that income with real estate losses, all right? Potentially. I'm not going to say it's entirely possible. But if this is your primary uh, job and primary profession, then chances are you are meeting the qualification as a real estate professional. Okay. Let's just be honest about that. So that's, that's kind of taken care of. The next step is you have to buy real estate every year. Well, just about every year anyways. And when you buy that real estate, you need to do things called a cost segregation study, which gets you a bunch of passive losses accumulated. Or if you're a real estate professional, there'll be non-passive losses. Okay. Which are even better and they got accumulated and you have net operating loss carry forwards or passive loss carry forwards, either way, okay? Um, super powerful stuff because now, if you have some years where you have income, but you had losses from a prior year, guess what? Those losses from a prior year offset income from the current year and you're still paying no taxes for that year. And you might still have losses left over that carry over to the next year. So the, the key with real estate is you have to be continually buying it. So you have to take the money that you're earning and reinvest it into real estate and just continue to do that over and over and over. If you think about people like Grant Cardone, for example, okay, um, that, that, that's how that guy became a billionaire. Well, he, he also has his sell stuff, right? But, you know, from a tax savings standpoint, that's really his, his big money maker and that's how he's paying very little in taxes, okay? Um, you know, I'm not sure exactly what his sell stuff looks like. I, I haven't seen his tax return or anything, so I don't know. But I'm just assuming that, you know, he's not making nearly as much money off of that stuff as he is from his real estate stuff. Okay. And, you know, but he's accumulated millions and millions and millions of dollars of real estate. Actually, I think he's probably got billions of dollars of real estate at this point. And so same thing with Donald Trump. You know, everyone's like, oh, I had Donald Trump not paying any taxes. Uh, because he's been in real estate for most of his life, if not all of his life. And that's his primary source of income. And guess what? <laughs> the great thing about real estate is you can leverage that stuff like this. Nobody's business. You can leverage it. You can put loan on top of loan on top of loan on top of loan. Every time the value goes up in real estate, it, this is, this is going to blow your mind people. All right, if you haven't heard this before, this is gonna blow your mind. Let's say you buy a 10 unit apartment complex for a million dollars. I don't know where you'd find that right now in this real estate economy right now, but let's just assume it for purposes of scenario or this example. And let's say five years from now, if the market rents were way below market, you increase the market rents up to a certain level uh, let's say they were at 500 a month, you increased them to 1,000 a month. So you basically doubled the rents within a five year period. Guess what that does to your valuation of that property? It also doubles the valuation of the property essentially, okay? 
Now, what happens when that valuation of that property doubles and you only have, let's say you only had a loan of um, 75,000 or 750,000, excuse me, 25% of the purchase price. Let's say you had a loan for $750,000 and within five years it got paid down to, I don't know, $725,000, okay? But now the property is worth 2 million. Guess what you can do? You can refinance. You can refinance and take up to usually 75% of the loan to value. So that would be on 2 million, um, 1.5 million. And you still owe 725,000, right? So the net would be 775. 775,000 dollars that you would receive in your pocket for refinancing that loan. What did you have to do to get that? Not very much, probably. I mean, there's there's some work that needs to be done for a 10 unit apartment complex. You have to coordinate maintenance people. You gotta coordinate with the property manager if you have one. You gotta, um, you know, deal with leases. You gotta deal with tenants. Blah blah blah. So there's some work, right? But not nearly as much as you probably would have to do in other stuff, right? <laughs> So if you were doing like an active business, like being a lawyer or an accountant or a doctor or a CPA, whatever, you know, a lot of work goes into that. So now you just made essentially $775,000 cash in your pocket. Now, do you get taxed on that? Huh? Well, I got money that came into my bank account. So I would think I would have to pay taxes on it, right? Uh... Nope, you don't. No taxes. Because it's a loan and it's debt that you have to repay, guess what happens? You pay zero taxes. Zero. <laughs> zero. Like, zero. I'm not even kidding. Zero. Okay? So you have all this cash flow coming from this rental. And that doesn't even include, by the way, the cash flow that you've been earning over that five year time period. But you probably have enough depreciation that is offsetting most of your. Uh, cash flow to where you're not really paying any taxes on that either. Okay, so you've been making all this money over this time period, plus you just got another $775,000 back from the bank. That's again tax free. Okay, and you're going to continue to make cash flow on this over the next five years. And five years down the line, you probably will do the same thing again. So what are we doing? Why are we, why are more people not interested in investing in real estate? And let me just explain. Single family real estate is a lot different than multifamily real estate. Okay. Single family real estate, the values are based off of comparables. That's, that's what they use for values. They don't care how much you're making in income. Usually they don't care how much you're making in, um, in rents. Well, except for that they want to make sure you have enough to cover the, the debt service, right? Um, but for the most part, they're going off of comparables for the valuation. So even if you increase your rent substantially and you're making tons of money off this project for a single family place, you're likely not going to get more loan funding unless there's a comparable in that area that would give you a higher value. Okay. Whereas multifamily which is generally going to be defined as five units or more. Okay. It has a whole different ball game. All they care about is your rental income. That's how they determine whether the property is valuable or not. So they take your rent you typically receive less your expenses, your operating expenses come down to this facade called a net operating income. <laughs> it does not include any interest that you're paying on the debt service, by the way. Okay. And from that net operating income, they give you, you know, a, a multiple of some sort for whatever the market is based on the cap rates that are common in your marketplace. They give you a multiple and that's how they determine your value. So what did I just say? If you increase the rents, if the rents are on that place are historically below market and there's room to raise the rents, get new people in there, raise the rents, then you just increase your value and you just made a ton of money, right? from the bank and also when you go to sell it at some point in the future, if you want to sell it. I'm not a huge fan of selling real estate, to be honest, um, unless you know, you're know you gonna turn it into something, a bigger project, then I can kind of see it like doing a 10th of a exchange, something like that. 
Um, but you know, if you're selling real estate and not, you know, benefiting from it long term, yeah, that's probably a, a, a bad idea. Okay, but all the all that stuff that I just talked about related to real estate, that's how you can potentially pay zero in taxes. But again, if you have a W two job or you have a business that is killing it and making you know hundreds of thousands of dollars in profit every year, don't expect to be able to come to anybody. I don't care who it is, and legitimately. Now I'm going to say legitimately because there's a lot of fraudsters out there and there's a lot of people out there that shouldn't be doing tax returns and they need to go to jail and I'm sick of them. All right, because I have a client that has been going back and forth to this person and driving me nuts. All right. So someone like that, all right, they're, they're telling them stuff that is just flat out wrong, all right? So you have to be careful who you're getting your advice from because anyone can give you a return that looks the way you want it to look. The question is, is it legal and is it going to stand up an audit? And as everyone knows, in the recently passed uh, bill, the, I'm going to call it the climate bill because I hate calling it the Inflation Reduction Act. It pisses me off they named it that. Uh, cause it's nothing like that. Right. But in that bill, um, they're hiring more IRS auditors, essentially they're, they're putting more money towards the IRS to enforce the tax laws, which means more people are going to get audited and I don't care what they say. You will get audited if you, no matter how much money you make. Um, I shouldn't say no matter how much money you make, but the people in lower income brackets below $400,000 are going to get audited. Um, that's where the money's at. All right. If you just look at the statistics, which we're going to do in a future episode, that's where the money's at. So I, they're, they're full of crap. But anyways, um, if you have a lot of real estate activities and all your income's coming from that, you very likely can pay zero in taxes. Okay. Other than that, again, you're going to need something like business losses. Uh, you're going to need um, some massive tax credits of some sort, like the earned income credit, child tax credit, um, R&D credits, um, solar credits. I mean, there's a ton of different credits that are out there that could potentially help you save on taxes for any given year. But the only true, tried and true, consistent way to pay virtually zero, if not actually zero in taxes every year, is real estate activity. So if you get yourself to a point where all your income's coming from real estate, then there's a good chance that you will not pay any taxes every year. So there, there's your aha moment. I don't know. Um, hopefully you guys uh, like the video. If, if you have questions, feel free to reach out. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, share on, on the channel, you know. Um, feel free to give the comments to me. I'm okay with haters too. You know, I'm always happy to defend my position on stuff, but um, yeah, don't, don't expect someone to pull something out of their hat just you just come up with something out of the blue that's going to save you thousands of taxes and make you pay nothing in taxes okay well that's the topic for today thanks everybody for tuning in and listening and hope everyone has a wonderful day Bye.